It takes a massive amount of power to hurl these two-ton cars down the runway. You need a big engine with lots of torque. Well, you're looking at our crash machine. It works with compressed nitrogen pushing on hydraulic oil to spin motors that then pull the car down the crash. The nuts and bolts are in these blue tanks right behind us. There's 18 tanks that have nitrogen in them. That nitrogen's also sitting on top of uh, accumulators that have pistons in them. The pistons are currently at the bottom of the accumulator. And so what we're gonna do before the crash is we're gonna fire up a hydraulic pump, fill these accumulators with oil, and when they fill, they're compressing that nitrogen back into these 18 tanks. And that's gonna get up to about 5,000 PSI. When we're done filling, we now have a lot of hydraulic oil sitting under very high pressure, and that's the energy source for the crashes. So that oil then flows through these large pipes to radial piston hydraulic motors. And those motors spin like, almost like an old-fashioned aircraft with the pistons all around the, around the center shaft, but it all runs on hydraulic oil. So the, the heart of the crash machine are, are these uh, three radial piston motors. Um, each one has uh, six pistons uh, surrounding a central shaft, spins the cable, a big shiv, and in that shiv is a 5 8 diameter uh, wire rope cable. That cable then gets threaded all the way down, almost 1,000 feet in total length, uh, and the car gets attached to that cable and gets pulled in upstairs to the crash. Currently, all of our consumer information tests are run somewhere between 30 and 40 miles an hour. We've run a 100 mile an hour closing speed crash uh, just to prove out the system in the past, and I can tell you, in an enclosed facility, that's a scary crash. Not everybody gets to crash cars every day, and, and we all kind of get a kick out of that. The interesting thing is when we find big differences, and occasionally the tests don't turn out the way we expect them, and, and, and that's uh, something that we as engineers all get a lot, of, a lot of charge out of because it's a new problem for us to solve. Nearly all of the vehicles that we test here at the Vehicle Research Center come from auto dealerships around Central Virginia. Our main objective here is, is buying um, actual vehicles that people will buy and, and drive. We usually do two tests a week. Uh, the reason for that is it takes so long to set one up. It could take two to three days to prep a vehicle from start to finish here. Depending on what type of crashes we're doing, I'd say we average about 80 crashes a year. Once the crash is all set up, control of the crash turns over to the tower. Up here we monitor the crash, we can end the crash if we needed to. Once I start this, we have 4 minutes and 30 seconds to get everything else in line. Open the doors, turn on the lights, make sure everything's correct and ready to happen. This is the start button here. This is what actually starts the crash. The car will come down the runway and impact the barrier down there on the floor. I'll be able to see the voltage on the automobile. I'll be able to see the brake line pressure there to make sure we've got brakes. On this screen here, we select our runway, we input what the car is, how much the car weighs, the speed we want from the vehicle. The machine in turn tells us how long it's going to take to achieve that. Right now, we got 12.1 seconds to get up to 40 miles an hour, and it's going to take 3.3 seconds of constant time or at 40 miles an hour before it impacts that barrier. This tells us the distance of the car. She is sitting back there right now tied down to the skate, and the skate is at, sitting at 164 meters. We control the acceleration of the craft by inputting how many Gs it can accelerate. And the reason we do that is the machine is capable of pulling it so quickly that it will unhook from the skate. This is also where we set the camera timing. The cameras will come on once the triggers hit at 4,500 milliseconds. Here I control the lights and at 30 seconds I'll be turning all the house lights off and I'll be turning all these lights on. I have a set of cameras here on every runway. This allows me to make sure there's nobody back there, to make sure the doors are open. This is our lockout, and I lock out any doors coming into the room and all the garage doors. That way no one can enter during a crash. You know, we don't want them walking through here. On the morning of the crash test, all this comes together and we attach the vehicle to the crash machine. We paint the dummy, it's a grease paint. We want to see paint transfer. 
we use different colors for different parts of the body so that we can tell this side of the head hit here, the, the inboard side of the head hit, rolled off, paint the skull cap for any rebound as it's coming back into the seat. And then after all of our checks that the data systems and the dummy positioning and all that stuff is in place, uh, we're ready for the crash test. And the crash machine will pull the vehicle into the block for the crash test. During that time, we'll be filming it in high speed so that we can slow down the viewing and see in slow motion something that takes place in just a fraction of a second. So after the crash, we'll take all that information from the cameras and from the data recorders and figure out what that means for a person that might be in the same place as the crash test dummy. Immediately after the crash, I'll come down and take a look for any head contacts or any, any dummy contacts that I can see immediately after the crash. This helps us to identify early whether the head may have hit the A-pillar or the roof rail or you know any knee contacts that would be visible immediately after the crash. And then we bring the vehicle into our photo studio where we take more exterior photos. Following those exterior photos, we'll remove the door, take some more photos while the dummy's inside the door, and then we begin our comprehensive interior investigation. We see our pretty characteristic uh, red, blue, and pink from the dummy head on the side curtain and also pink and blue from the dummy's face contacting the frontal airbag. We'll notice some of the intrusion from um, the car striking the barrier. And then also in the footwell, we have painted our shin, our left shin red. And we can see some red paint on the left instrument panel. And then also even further in, there's green and pink from the right leg on the uh, right knee bolster. Following my interior investigation, uh, we're going to take out the dummy. Uh, Tyler will clean him up. Um, let me know if there's any skin lacerations or any other dummy damage that we need to address in the future. Our photography department will come in and take some additional photos. The rest of the vehicle equipment is being removed at this time. The car itself will then get its post-crash intrusion measurements taken and Following all of our measurements and investigations, this car will eventually go to salvage. One of the most common questions after a crash test, visitors will come down and ask, did this person walk out of this car crash? And the truth of the matter is we won't actually know until we have downloaded all the injury data from the dummy, looked at video analysis to examine where the dummy has contacted on the inside of the vehicle. And then also another metric in our rating process is intrusion measurements. And so that will also take place after the crash. On board the vehicle, we've got the data recorder and that is hooked up to a wireless router inside the car that sends the data directly to the network at the Vehicle Research Center. Uh, once it's on the network, our engineers, all our engineers have access to it from their desks and they can run all our standard routines for figuring out what the string of numbers coming out of the dummy actually means in terms of injury risk. And once all of this is complete, then we write up a report about it and that becomes the rating. After all the data was gathered and analyzed, the 2013 Nissan Altima achieved a rating of acceptable for the small overlap test. This is the second highest rating the Institute presents. We've just seen what it takes to make you safer on the road. A team of dedicated and impartial experts, stringent and repeatable test conditions, and high-tech analysis. The result? We all enjoy the work that we do because we're, we know that in some small way we're making the world a better place. Uh, we can see the results of our work when we uh, drive down the road. You're doing something for people. You're saving lives. You know, it's just, it's a wonderful feeling to work here. And that's how it's done.